So <clears throat> my goal is to give a uh, combinatorial description of uh, some level or modules of uh, a fine <clears throat> uh, quantum super algebras and quantum toroidal uh, super algebras. This mimics uh, the construction for the even case, and so I will be pointing out how the how this was done in the in the even case and what uh, are the differences that you had to, to overcome to, to achieve this, this description. And so uh, I'll not be showing the, the, the full definition of the, the quantum toroidal superalgebra because it takes maybe four or five uh, slides just to show the other relations, but they'll show how, how you should imagine this algebra and how the, the, the fine parts glue together to give the, the toroidal uh, superalgebra. And so just to give a, a small uh, introduction. So you can think that this is a uh, quantum toroidal is uh, <clears throat> quantization of a toroidal algebra. Or you can think that this is a finization of a uh, very affine uh, algebra or super algebra. And the first time that this, this structure appears in the literature is in this paper from Ginsburg, Kapranov, and Vasehoi in 1995. But uh, the super case remained un mostly untouched until our, our paper in 2019. And it appears in many places, and most of these places I am still trying to understand how the, the quantum toroidal is actually uh, working in this context. So just, just to list, the one that I want to, to, to mention is not written, is that the, quite recent, it's about crystal melting. And it's basically the, the last picture that they will be showing it appears in, in a more general context than the, the, including now the, the fine Youngians and the other Youngians that are not coming from, from some uh, classical Lie algebras. And so let's uh, start with some, some notations. Let's fix uh, M and N, M not equal to N, and capital N will be uh, the sum. I will need these two sets that you can think that they are, they are the nodes of the Dinkin diagram and the affine Dinkin diagram. And uh, so when we are talking about superalgebras, we have uh, non-isomorphic uh, affine <coughs> Cartan matrices, and you have to, 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 to fix one choice of parity of the, the simple roots. And so to parameterize all these choices, we use this set. So we just uh, n entries with plus or minus one, where uh, you have m uh, entries equals to one and n equals to minus one in any order. For each order, you have one Cartan matrix. And if you are just in the, the, in the classical setting, you know that all these algebras they are isomorphic. You're just changing the parts of your generators. And the, the, the Cartan matrix is, uh, the entries are all computed just from, from this sequence S that we have to fix. <clears throat> and uh, also the, the parity of the, the roots and of the generators, you just have to look. So if you want to know the, the parity of the, the node I, you just look at the position I and I plus one of your sequence. If they are equal, you have something that's even. If they are different, they are odd. And so, as I said, I'm not showing uh, the, the relations that are defined in the algebra, but I need to fix the, the notation for the generators. So for the, just the, the quantum SLS, I will be working with the Chevalier generator, so EI, FI, TI. Uh, for I in the uh, finite linking diagram. And then you have two ways to consider the affinization of this algebra. You can do the dream from Jimbo affinization, where basically you are just doing the same thing in the, 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 the simple case, but now with uh, i hat. So you're just adding these four new generators and the relations, if, you are in a, if your n is large enough, the relations are local. So you actually can just look at the same definition, just change i to i hat. So this is the spirit most of the time, just changing i to i hat. Or you can consider the, 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 the new dream field optimization where you can have to consider uh, this generating series and having three main generators. And now you have this uh, central element, which is also taken as a, as a generator in this case. And then to get the definition of the quantum toroidal algebra or the superalgebra, you just do 
this new affinization, new, new drink affinization, but uh, now you take uh, I, I hat, not just I. And so the best way to, to, uh, to think about this is by this, <clears throat> this picture. So just resuming everything that I said, we start with the UQSLS, and then you have two ways to do the affinization. We know that this is, these two algebras are uh, isomorphic. For, so from the, in the even case, this was proved by Beck, and the, in the super case, this was proved by Amman. And then you can do this again. So if you do the new dream affinization, starting from the dream for Jimbo affinization, you get to the quantum toroid, or the same thing if you do this way. And you can also think that you are doing quantization twice. So you have not only just Q, but now you depend on Q and D. And so, as I said, the goal is to give a combinatorial description of some modules. And the, in the, well, the, the goal was to do this for the affine version, not the toroidal. But sometimes when you are doing combinatorics, if you introduce a new parameter, everything becomes easier. And this is what's happening. So using the quantum toroidal superalgebra, we were able to, to get some nice structure of modules of the, the affine. Uh, quantum super algebra. And so one other thing is that, uh, as I said, the quantum toroidal depends on two parameters, but we like to work with three. So they are not independent. The, the, their product is one. And uh, we're assuming that the, the only combination of integer potencies of this uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3 that gives one. So that's what I mean by generic. So the main feature one of the main features of this uh, quantum toroid algebra is that inside of it, you have two copies of the affine uh, super algebra. So one copy is what we call the vertical subalgebra, which is the image of this uh, inclusion of the, the quantum affine in the toroidal. And uh, we also have <clears throat> the horizontal subalgebra, which is the image of the other copy of the, the, the affine superalgebra now in the inferging realization. So keep this in mind, that you have these two uh, copies of the affine side of the toroidal. In particular, you have to talk about two levels when you're doing quantum toroidal stuff. And uh, so the new dream field, you have to put the C as uh, the central element C as a generator. When you're doing this for the, the the inferging was the product of these t's, all the t's, this is a central element. So one central element that you have to remember is the c, the other one in the toroidal case is the, the k, which is the product of all the ki's. Now, the module, the type of modules that we are working are these highest loop weight modules, which is basically the same definition for Delphine, but now we are considering that i is in i hat. So all the currents is E is the AOU killing my <clears throat> generating vector. And this vector uh, is an eigenvector of all KIs. Now, one thing that I should mention here is that I'm, I'm talking about just SLL uh, everywhere. But uh, some, in some places, you need to do just GL, a fine GLS, or GL and Manhattan. And what I mean by this is that in this definition, uh, you also have to take, uh, the, for the ki, what the i can be inside of i hat. So you have an extra current when you're doing GL. Even if you're doing this with the Dreamfield dream Jimbo realization, when I'm talking about the GL affine, I'm including an extra current inside of the definition of, of the SL. Now, the, the quantum toroidal superalgebra is a hop, well, topological hop uh, superalgebra this coproduct. I, I don't need the other structures, just, just the coproduct. If you consider just the, 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 the vertical subalgebra, it, it, it's still a hop subalgebra. The horizontal has some, some issues, but the vertical is a hop subalgebra. And then, since I have the coproduct, I can try to do uh, tensor products of modules and see uh, what happens. The issue is that I have products of functions in series and so I have this delta function giving me some poles. And, but this is, this is what makes, this is what gives the trick 
to make the description that wasn't working in the, in the affine case. And so I would need two main ingredients. One is the, just the vector representation of the, the affine uh, SL, S, which has, so this just a vector space base is VI for I and Z. And the parity of the vectors are given by, by this. So if SI plus one is one, this vector is, uh, vector VI is even. If it's minus one, is odd. And then the action given in the dream for dream realization in this uh, super space is just given easily by this picture. So if I acts on uh, VI minus one up to, to congruence. <clears throat> But I also can consider the dual. So I'm just not calling the dual because uh, it's not the same one, the same normalization that you'd had if you consider the, uh, the hop structure, but uh, it's the, the dual space, but with another normalization of the action. And uh, the main difference is that it goes backwards. So in this case, the Fs are increasing the index of my vectors and in the vector representation, the Vs are, uh, the Fs are, yes, Fs are increasing the, 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 the indices in the vector representation and decreasing the, uh, yes, Fs, they go backwards, so they decrease in the co-vector representation. And then, so this, <clears throat> the, the, these two, the V and W, they are the affine, uh, vector representations, and now you can consider the evaluation uh, modules that we get from, for the toroid, always starting from these two uh, affine modules. So let's fix some complex number that's non-zero. And since I have to keep track of which parameter I'm using, I will change my notation from vj to this uh, u brackets in j. And I also need this function psi. And notice that this function has a pole at z equals to one, and this is an important part. And so the action of the quantum toroidal is almost the same as uh, you'd expect uh, if you're thinking about uh, evaluation going from the affine to the, the, the finite, or <clears throat> uh, if you're looking at the, the action only on the, the instance of the vectors, you're just evaluating uh, your current at, at this point. And so what, as I was saying, <clears throat> when you're doing the, the core product, you will see products of the delta functions and this function's size. And so you have to, to be careful when these uh, things are products well defined. And so we have this for the V. So this is, will be my, my module VU. And uh, I have the same thing for W. The, main, the, the only difference is that it goes backwards and the dependence uh, uh, on, in the W case is in Q3, not in Q1 from the V. And so <clears throat> let's start with some, some pictures of, uh, of this, uh, this base. So this UJ, I will see as a semi-infinite uh, row like this, so infinite to the left and it ends at coordinate j. So in this case, I have u4, it should end at coordinate four, and then I fill this diagram with the, just the residue mod n of the coordinate. And uh, for the, the vectors in w, if the vector is u minus j, I will consider this as a column infinite going up, ending at coordinate, coordinate uh, j, and then I fill this as minus k mod n. And then the action of the generators EI and FI in these uh, two pictures is very simple. So EI, they will be removing boxes of color I, and the FIs will be adding boxes of color I wherever possible. And so, like this, for example. This, in this vector, the only F that can be applied non-trivially is F0, so I just add a zero here. And uh, I could apply E4, for example, here. And then the coefficient is uh, it's very easy to compute. You just have to know the coordinate of where I'm adding this box. The same thing happens for the, the W case. It's the, it's the same thing. The only difference is the 
<coughs> have Q3, not Q1. Now let's see what happens when I try to do tensor products of these two, these two families of modules. So for example, if I take VU tensor VV, and say, let's say that I take U, I and VI and apply just, just this sum of the core product. I will get this delta function and this psi. And if you evaluate uh, this, uh, this psi function at the support of the delta function, you see that you have a pole at V equals to U. So this tensor product, this space, doesn't have a action of the quantum toroidal with this core product if V is equal to U. And so, in general, what we have uh, is this. If, uh, if I'm trying to do V, U, tensor V, V, and uh, U is not a multiple of V of this shape, then uh, it's all defined. If V is not a multiple of U of this shape, if this Q2 plus or minus, then this module, this tensor product, is an irreducible module. And so the fun starts when you take V equals to Q2 times Q1 to this power times U. Then you have a submodule that, you, for example, if you take I equals to zero, what this is saying that they should take J greater or equal than K. But the, the, the difference from the, the, the even case that I'll mention uh, more later is that the, the equality here is only allowed when my SJ plus one is minus one. So here is the, the first uh, time that you actually have to see the, 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 the difference in the choices of the, the parities in the structure of the module. And the same way if I take the Q2 inverse <coughs> here, then uh, the only thing that I'm changing is the condition or on when the equality is allowed. For the W, it's almost the same thing. The difference is that, well, here I had SJ plus one before, now it's just SJ, and the, the order is reversed. And Q1 becomes Q3, but it's the same thing. And so if I take, for example, VU tensor V Q2 U, by the, the previous result, if this, uh, this module uh, has an irreducible submodule spanned by these vectors, UJ and Q to U, K, with J greater or equal than K, than K. But the equality here is only allowed if SJ plus one is minus one. But remember, the parity of this vector is given by this. If SJ plus one is minus one, this vector is odd. So what I'm saying is that the, I'm only allowed the equalities uh, inside of this subspace if uh, the vectors are odd, which is in agreement with the, the old construction for the even case where the, the sub-module that you would be taking was the, this q deformed uh, wedge product. And so if you do wedge products of two odd vectors, this is non-zero. The same vector, this is non-zero if they are odd. And so this is the, the same thing that's happening here. Now, in the even case, the basic representation in this family of uh, level one modules for defining uh, quantum, super, quantum algebra this was taken as a subspace in this uh, infinite tensor product, which is, is just the, the, the infinite wedge product. And uh, so the, the highest weight vector in this case, since you cannot have repetition, the, 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 the principal candidate to be the highest weight vector would be vectors like this, where the, the difference in the coordinates is just going down by one. Now, since I, have, I can have repetition when I'm in the super case, the, one of the candidates to be highest weight vector would be something that has, that z, that's odd and it's repeating forever. But this, uh, if you try to act in this vector, you see that you cannot get some normalization to make this uh, limit well-defined without losing the information that we want. And so, I mentioned V tensor V, w, w tensor W. If I do, if I try to mix and do V tensor W, what happens is if U is not a multiple of V of this shape, then uh, this is well defined. And when it's well defined, it's already reducible. So I don't get much structure here, just 
is either the space is, uh, the whole space doesn't have the, a modular structure or is irreducible already. And so let's see what happens if I take VU and WU. Then this delta function times this psi will give him something like this. And uh, see, this, this psi function has a pole at z equals to 1. So the only problem will appear if j and i, so this bar is, is taking into account the, the parities, if they are 0. And uh, remember, the action in v was going in one direction. The action on w was going in the opposite direction. And so if I consider the, the subspace spanned by vectors of this shape with lambda minus 1 and minus mu, and with this extra condition that I can only have mu different from zero if the lambda is different from zero, then I get a space where I almost can define an action. So the only pole that I have to deal with is the coming from the E zero action. But if I take not two, just one copy of V and W, if I take two copies of V and W, the next one, we have uh, the action of k you give me a zero that you cancel this pole. So this is precisely what I need to, to do the, the limit. And so just to, <clears throat> to describe how the, this limit is taken and how to parameterize the, the bases and show the pictures, uh, just recall that a partition is a known increasing sequence of integers, positive integers, non-negative integers. I now is considering uh, infinitely many zeros at the end and the number of non-zero entries is the length, this is L lambda. Then I will say that a pair of partitions is an S partition if I have this condition on when they can repeat in the, the first partition and the other condition when they can repeat in the second partition. So this is the same condition that we had, to be, to, we had allowing equality in the previous results. And then I'm also asking that the length of lambda is greater or equal than the length of mu. If you are in the even case, then lambda and mu are just the Frobenius partitions of a sum, uh, some partition. And then we parameterize the vectors just like this, just take, taking the entries, and uh, for the lambdas, you just subtract one. For the mu's, you just take the negative. This gives you a vector inside of this uh, tensor product. And then you take a smaller tensor product with zeros at the end just to make sure that you can check all the relations. And then you can renormalize the, the tensor product to cancel the pole and check the relations and everything works nice. So we have a, this works well with the inclusion so you can take the, the direct limit and you have this well-defined module for the toroidal subalgebra, the toroidal <coughs> quantum toroidal superalgebra. And then what happens is that this module, it's the highest weight <clears throat> module with weight psi one, psi u over z at the entry zero. And so if you look at the, the action of the vertical GLS, this has weight lambda zero. And so to, to see the pictures, uh, for this basis, what you have to do is go back and take this, the, remember, this was the picture for a vector in V, this was the picture for a vector in W, and then you just glue them at the zero coordinate and forget the tails. And then you glue everything, all other vectors that you have along the diagonal. And you get something like this. So what's in gray, they are vectors in V, what's in blue, they are vectors in W, and then the action is the same as in the even case. So the E's, they are removing boxes of color I, and the FI, they add boxes of color I, whatever possible. And to, to, to get the, the, the coefficients, you just have to, to take into account the parity and act by the case uh, after the point where you're adding the box or if you're acting by E or before if you're acting by F. But it's the, it's the same, uh, spirit as in the even case, the only thing that you didn't have was how to describe the partitions that are parameterizing this, these modules. And so with this construction, you can, do, can describe with this uh, uh, combinatorial uh, setting all these modules, with the shape they all have uh, level one or minus one. 
And uh, we, we think that they are re reducible when you restrict the action of the vertical GLMN or the GLS. And when these modules are in standard parity, the characters are known. And so we can show that they are reducible because we know the characters and the characters match. But in general, it's just, it's just a conjecture that they are reducible. And uh, once I have these level one modules, I can iterate this construction, but now it gets uh, easier because I don't have to mix two, two types of modules as I have to do in the super case. So in the even case, just the Vs is sufficient. In the super case, I have to do this V and W at the same time. But now, if I want to do this uh, again, I can consider the same module, but notice that the, the K2 powers are decreasing now. This changes the conditions on repetition. And so, if I, do, if I consider almost the same construction inside of this infinite tensor product here, what I get is a highest rate toroidal module with this highest weight, where f is this function here. And I have freedom to choose whatever k I want. If k is generic, we know that this module is irreducible. And uh, the, the basis uh, of this, uh, a basis of this module is parameterized by 3D uh, Young diagrams, which is a generalization of plane partitions. And, but the action, the spirit of the action is the same. The E's are, they are removing boxes and the F's, they are removing, they are adding boxes. If K, if this value K is not generic, so this A and B here, they are giving me a coordinate of a box in this 3D partition that's not allowed to be included. So this describes a uh, way more complicated module. But I also can, when I'm doing the, the limit, Remember, in the, when I was constructing the level one, I was thinking that uh, my tail was full of zeros. And now, in this case, the tail, well, the, the, the standard construction, you are adding uh, empty partitions at the tail. But you can choose some suitable pairs of partitions, which are, we call color, colorless. It, they are also working with the, the, the direct limit. And then this gives uh, also another family of modules uh, that with the vertical boundaries on, the, on the, 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 the 3D partition. And if I change how these Q, the, this Q2 powers are, are jumping, I have horizontal boundaries in the, in the pictures. And so, in, the, in general, this is some, some vector in this, uh, in this basis, something like this. Whatever the, the number is green is somewhere where I can add a box and whatever is blue I can remove. And then notice this tree is repeating here. And uh, remember, the Q2 powers, they are changing when I'm doing the, the horizontal limit or the vertical. And so if it, this tree can be repeated in the horizontal level, they cannot be repeated in the vertical level. In the same way, this box number two here can be repeated vertically, but cannot be repeated horizontally. And uh, if I'm if I take the different, uh, different jumps of the Q2 powers or different uh, tails, so this is how a uh, highest weight vector looks like with these different choices. And then just see here I have five places where I can start acting this highest weight vector. And so these modules, they are called McMahon modules. And uh, well, the reason that they, they get this name is because well, the character, if you consider the grading given by the number of boxes, it's uh, computable. And uh, so th this function that's in blue here is just counting the, uh, the parity of the, the vectors that you are looking when you're constructing the, the products. And then if you take the even case, so everybody here is, oops, everybody here is just one, this, becomes just the, the usual uh, generating function for the plane partitions, which is called the McMahon function. That's why we're calling these modules McMahon modules. And uh, this is it. Thank you.
This one or the previous? Yeah. Sorry, what? Okay, could you hear? This business where, uh, so look at statistics of these representations as parameters go to infinity and somehow you see things like there's some random region and a circle. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, I don't know. Okay, no, I don't know. No, so uh, what, what I know is that if you, if, if you choose this, uh, depending on how you choose these parameters, you, you have a boundary on the, the shapes of the, the polytopes that appear, but uh, okay. the distribution, I, I, I don't know how to say it. 